Good morning, everyone. So today I have a video brought to you, sponsored by uh, Tonic Studios. Um, it is of the new showcase called Timeless Tea Jar. So they did send these items free of charge for my review. And of course, all opinions are my own. And any links in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. So luckily, this um, sample I have does have the carrier. And look at this. So we can have a good view of what it is that we're making today. Um, I just, this is so pretty. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, there's like two different types of little jars that you can make in here. It has a little lid, and then it has that really sweet kind of um, encasing here on the side, on the very top, should I say. And it kind of reminds me of the construction or similar feel to the um, designer's choice they had a little while back. It was, it made like a coffee cup. So pretty. Um, and that just kind of reminds me of that that style um, to finish it off. It looks really nice. Um, so all kinds of inlays and just gorgeous things. So what I'm going to do is take this out. It says incredibly versatile creates two beautiful boxes perfect for gift giving. Um, again, because this one's um, kind of shorter, you know, it still has the four sides. And this one's a little bit taller. So let's check this out. I'm going to open this up and take it out of the packaging here. I am just really loving this kind of thing, <laughs> like getting into um, putting something like this together. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, even better. Even better. All right, so we have some more images um, here, some more inspiration. And it's kind of funny as I look at this, you know, I was first looking at it and then Timeless Tea Jar, I'm thinking maybe I want to make mine kind of like, um, like a Chinese porcelain look, which would be like white and blue, really. Um, Maybe some accents of a different color blue, but something like this, but a little bit different. Look at that. So pretty. And then we have these guys. So uh, creating a tea jar box. So it doesn't really matter which shape you use. It's basically going to be the same construction. Um, so again, we have the two base pieces, of course, because um, it has the four sides. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, and then how to do the bottom. You do the top. You have the little bits that go in there. Very much like the lid. Um, in the um, coffee cup and then um, oh this is the little lid part okay so you need a couple of those wow and then just decorate it however you like so let's check these out um, okay so this is a die set for the taller uh, jar and it looks like it would be situated is it tall at the bottom yeah so it's like this like this is the bottom and this would be the top part and then you have two that you stick together so that's the main die this outer piece but look at all of the dies that are in there so we have the pieces that will cut that out if you want you have an inlay again with the bottom being a little bit different we also have a different way to cut out the uh, triangle if you want with uh, again a, a slightly different style inlay um, this one does the wavy edge with again a different kind of inlay you can mix and match those we have a little tag that I will, um, if I recall or remember, should I say recall? If I remember to, I'll try and cut that because I do not know what that says. Let me see if it. Yeah, we'll do that later. And then we have um, these are the lid pieces, right? And so it's going to be the same lid and for both of them, and it looks like it's the same base for both of them too. So we have all these pieces that you can mix and match inside of there. Um, just beautiful again inserts. I mean these probably they're a little bit different size than this so those are just for the lid um, to do some fun things with that um, more inlays look at this little sweetie um, the little tag again has different inlay and the tag itself also has a different piece that you can also cut or just inlay and this is a, inlay has uh, embossing it says love and then this is that top piece and there's a few of them that's so cool okay well I was going to pull that out but this piece right here or like this one this larger piece here um, let me see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's octagon. You can place it right here. So as you can see, those different styles. So pretty. And then um, and that also has all these different things that you can decorate with. So what happens is these other pieces, I like especially for this one, these pieces here are what you would pop into here. And you can use them also basically so there's a uh, different ways to use all these different pieces um, so again inlay 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 and those are all mix and matchable also with the outer edge it's also mix and matchable and then there's also a piece that will just cut the plain little octagon 
And then we have uh, triangles, inlays, smaller triangles, different sizes here. Um, this is the part for the um, the little lip that the lid will hold on to. So we saw that in the instructions already. Some more triangles. Again, lots of inlays. I mean, there's just a ton of dies on this sheet. Um, I think I've looked at everything. So again, this one also has the plane. It has the insert. It has the outer. Um, and then mixed and matching here. This one just does the embossing. Kind of like this one just does the embossing. Really pretty. And then some more inlays and different ways to play with that. Really, really great. So what I'm going to do is grab some papers and we will start cutting. Let me give you some measurements though real quick before I move along. Um, okay, the, this die down here at the bottom is about seven and a quarter inches long or so. And in the width it is... Let's get this one kind of more accurate. Uh, it is four and a half. So four and a half inches wide. Um, and then this one here is about the same seven and a quarter inches long. It's going to be a, bit, a little bit wider. Uh, about five, five and I would say an eighth inch wide. Okay, so hopefully that info helps you um, to see if this will work in your die cutting system. So let me grab some papers and we'll just jump right in. Okay, so I grab these colors. Um, unfortunately, this blue is out of the packaging, but if I find the name of it, I will uh, add it there. It's a brighter blue. It might be the cobalt. I'm not sure. This is navy blue. And then some uh, Craft Perfect, like just the classic card on both of these. And this is Smooth Card. It's white cardstock. Um, this one happens to be 300 GSM. And I think I'm going to make the shorter of the two. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to pull out one sheet. It's nice and thick. I feel like two, but it's just because it's super thick. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut some things. So um, if you're planning your design, like let's say, oh, I do want to show you. It does say for you on <laughs> that little tag, the one that was hard for me to read there. Um, like this one. If you want to cut like little inlays, you would do that before you put it together, you know, as you're doing this part. So let's say I wanted to cut this out because I'm using this one. But I just want inlays in here, and then I'm going to back it up with a different color. So when I go to cut these, I would pick one of the inlays and go ahead and pop it in this first time because you're going to use it once. And then take this out and put it here and take it out and put it there and there. I would remove the die by that time. I would just <laughs> place it in within the, um, the score marks. And that way you know what you're doing. But um, just so you do that first before you start um, assembling it, of course, or moving on from the die cutting. Um, so we need two of this. I think they'll both fit on here, of course. And so I'm just trying to see if I'm just doing everything white, which I think I am. And then, um, which is basically this top part where we're going to cut two of those. And then it says to, uh, depending on the size and which um, jar you're making, you want to cut the larger or the smaller octagon. So what they mean by that is, uh, remember when we talked about the base, I said, oh, this is probably, so, um, or I talked about the top, sorry. So this is a smaller octagon, and it says a larger octagon. There's not like a larger octagon that's just plain, so you would just pick one of these guys, like a, let's say I'll, I'll use this one, or however. So um, you maybe not want to use that one, because that one has like die cuts coming out of it, you know? Um, but you want to use one of these embossing ones. Um, I'll just use this one, because I suppose, because I do need this uh, for the size box I'm making right now. I'm making the smaller one, or jar. Um, and then we need four of this little guy. And two of this top part. Again, if you want to do any inlays, you know, plan that out and think about that now. Because basically this is it. Um, and then after this you just decorate it up however you like. So if you do want inlays popped in there, you would cut them at the same time that you're cutting your pieces. Nope. Okay, so I'm going to go through, I knew it, I was going to say, it's probably stuck to the magnet here. Cut out four of these, two of these. For now, just the one of this. Without that center cut, because we need the whole thing to be intact. And then two of these guys. If I can get it all in here, I will. If not, I'll move on to another piece of paper, too. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm using the tangerine to cut it. I'm not doing anything special other than just running them through. And the, um, the impressions are really nice. Look at that. And the um, score lines, just really, really nice. Again, this is 300 GSM paper, so it's a little bit thicker. So as you push through, it really wants to, it gets that um, 
impression really nice. So, okay, um, I'll continue cutting. Okay, guys. So, um, I got everything off of that one page, and I just needed a little scrap, and I actually had a scrap of smooth white cardstock. So, I think if I had looked at it and planned it in my head, I probably would have got all of it on one page, but there it is. Just so you know about how much that needs, and I'm assuming the bigger one would take probably a page and a half or so, because it's a little bigger. Uh, let's put this here. Alright. Let me just orient these pieces. We have this. Right now we're going to work with these pieces. And the rest of this we'll get to in just a minute. I'll tell you this mat has like a tooth to it, so whenever I try to slide things, they don't want to slide. <laughs> it just wants to be held down. Let me move that. Okay. Um, it does say to uh, adhere them. You know, it's so funny in my mind, I'm thinking they're like this, but yeah, no, they're like this. So, I hear one to the other, but you all know I like to score things first, and it seems to me like most of these scores are going to be brought inwards. This is the nice side of the paper, so I'm just going to go across and do this. Very thick paper, that 300 GSM, so I just want to make sure to fold it right out in the lines. I'm going to go around and do that to all of it. Just come in. And I'm not bone folding or anything, I'm just giving it a little, little bend. Okay, I'll do it to both pieces and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've already kind of folded them and they can go back, it doesn't really matter, but for now. Um, and then what you're going to do is just glue two of these together. So I am going to use my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. I love using wet glue for any kind of paper project, but really especially for boxes or things that are going to be, um, that you want to hold together for a very, very long time. Uh, if you like dry adhesives, so we're just going to put this tab to this one. Um, I would, and most people I think would recommend using uh, red liner tape. I'm just kind of bringing these little tabs behind that piece just so I can tuck it in a little better. Um, yeah, you want to use red liner tape. And of course, as soon as you put it on there and stick it down, it's stuck. But for me, I'm going to hold it for a little bit because I'm using a wet adhesive. Now, Nouveau Deluxe dries... Well, it sets up really fast. It dries after a few minutes, but for like right now it'll, you know, it's already holding on. <laughs> um, and then I'm just going to go around and basically glue this down. And what's funny is it looks like there's all these tabs, but those are for something else later. Uh, right now, really, what we're going to do is just glue a few of these tabs around these edges here. And that's going to give us kind of our basic shape. Um, I'm just, I'm going to let this set up just for a little bit longer just so it doesn't, um, come apart at all, which I doubt it will, but I'm just, I'll be right back. Okay. So now we have these tabs, so you can put the glue on the tabs. I'm going to do this middle section at the same time. So you're gluing all these tabs that are kind of like on the inside, not the top and bottom yet. Because again, like I mentioned, that's for the, the lid and stuff, or the next portion, the base. Um, so I'm going to put glue on these bits for now. And then when we go to connect these last two, I'll do that then. So I'm going to bring this in. Bring this in. I hope you can kind of see. I'm just attaching those to the very sides. And I'm just kind of looking and making sure it's nice and straight. Looking lovely. And again, this is Nouveau Deluxe holds on pretty quickly. I can probably move on from this in just a second. But I just want to make sure it's nice and straight. And then here, so that's the other tabs that we put glue on. Here and here. And again, just hold those for a few seconds. Try to just keep it straight. <laughs> that's all I'm looking for right now. So you can see this one edged out just a little bit. So what I'll do is just kind of rearrange that. And this one looks pretty good. So, I'm going to let that set up for a few seconds, just to get a little sturdier, and then we'll just adhere these two. Okay, I think those are pretty sturdy. We're going to put these two little tabs here. So again, just all the ones that kind of are on this inner portion. And bring those here. I know this is going to look awesome when we're done. This is so simple, just to kind of put it together, and then the decoration is, you know, Sky's the limit. Whatever layering and things that you want to do with that. 
So again, I'm going to give that a minute to set up before we do this last portion. Okay, and this is the last part. And this one has three tabs, that tab that's going to hold it here, and then these two guys. So however you want to do that, I think I'm just going to pretty much do it all at once. Just put this here, this here, and this here. And then I'll just coax them in where I need them to be, like this to here, and this here. And I'm kind of holding it from underneath, too. So I'll push that down. So I can see this is exactly where I wanted this one here. So now I'll work on this, just getting it kind of a little bit closer. And that one too. Pretty good. So I'm using my fingers on the inside too to kind of push back. So cool. Okay, I'm going to let that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have cut the base of the box. We didn't cut the top part yet because um, I want to talk about that and, and actually show it instead of kind of say, oh, okay, then I'm going to do this, you know. So this is our base and you can look at your box. So the other one, the longer one, has an obvious top and bottom because it's a different size, right? <laughs> so um, we're doing this kind of a square <laughs> jar. Um, a square jar. It sounded like I said swear jar. That'd be so funny if you use it for a swear jar. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so what I like to do whenever I look at boxes like this, I look at it and then which side do I want to be up and down, you know, because it is handmade and it's going to look a little different. Um, so I think I'm going to use this as the bottom. So uh, we're going to glue this down and that's it. And that'll kind of help you frame it out and get it nice and squared up, you know. So let's go ahead and put some glue on here. And I put the glue pretty much towards the edge, but also towards the center. But I really want to make sure that there's glue on that edge just to keep it held down nicely. And again, it has that beautiful embossing, so you want that facing you, because otherwise it'll trap it underneath. And I'm just going to look at this and make sure it's nice and squared up. Here. So I'm kind of holding this area here and then I'll work on this other, this side over here. I'll push it in just a second. Oh, you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm kind of, I was working this side, making sure this was lined up and then kind of starting to do this side. And once that's almost set up, I'll turn it over and then I'll just use like a bone folder or something to help me kind of push down from the inside too. But I just want to make sure it's holding on pretty good for now. And again, that just gives you stability. It helps you keep it nice and um, sturdy there. And keeping that shape right, kind of squared up. So now I'm going to turn it over and I can see down inside. And I'll just, like I said, take something that will help me kind of just push the tabs down just to make sure. Just like that. So pretty. Okay, I'm going to let this set up for just a second while I decide um, what color I want this rim here. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so this is ready to go. Put this side. Um, okay, so I am going to accent that. I'm going to make that lid or the little cuff part here. Um, in this paper, I have some scraps that's already been cut. Let me see. It's called Imperial Blue Mirror Card. And as I'm looking at this, I just realized this other um, piece is different from this other guy's here. Let me show you. So hopefully earlier I had mentioned, like, in all the examples, this part is what's kind of keeping it at the top. I don't know if you can see that. You can accent it, like with this one, you know? But the one that you need, the size that you need, has to be this big guy. This one. So it is a different sizing than like these guys. Now you can cut this and you can use this still. It's going to cover up the whole front of your piece. But you need this one for this top part. And I'll show you the difference. Like this one, if you can see, is a little bit smaller. So it wouldn't cover it. So you need this guy. And this will be the same for the tall box or the square one like we're using now. Or jar. Sorry, I'm going to keep saying box. <laughs> so we need both of these pieces now for this part. Because um, you want to cut that center out. So let me take this and yep, 
And of course we'll tape it down. Either way, even if it was just the one piece and I'm using mirror card, I would tape it down because mirror card can be a little bit slippery. You just want your dies to stay there. You don't want it to kind of move around on you. So I will stick this down. And I don't mind, usually I, whenever I use something pretty like this, I put the tape on this outer part. Hi! <laughs> you can see my face. Um, this is going to cut out anyway, but you can use it later for something else. So I'm going to run this through and I will be right back. Alright, so that just popped right out on me. There it is. I'll put these to the side for now. And so this is going to hold this. Oh, so pretty. So if you're following along, this is basically step five. And then um, on the next one, we're just going to glue the little tabs all around in there. So again, just like I did the first part, I'm going to make sure the glue is right to the edge. And I'm talking about the outer edge. And the inside too, but make sure that outer edge really is ready to be sealed up. And I'm going to kind of lay it and start on one side, kind of holding it down. And kind of pushing in and bringing it around. Again, just using my hands to kind of feel where we're at. And I'll hold it down just like before. You can, uh, once it's kind of set up, because you do, uh, for me, I like to hold it for a little while before I start manipulating the bottom, but I'll hold it like this and then I'll come in and kind of push up at the bottom part. And I'll be back. Okay, guys, I brought this closer to me so I can see this is so pretty already. Look at that. So cool. It looks like even like a little flower jar if you were to decorate and put like some little flowers or like those pens that have like the flower tops. That'd be really cute and just have it as a structural like flower vase, you know? So cute. Okay, um, so now we're going to do the um, creating the, li the lid. And so these four pieces, you're going to fold the tabs back. So this is the, the nice side of the paper, right? The right side facing me because you're going to basically tuck these in under here. And then this one kind of goes in. So I'm going to do that with all four pieces. Bend those up. Bend that forward and bend this a little bit back. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'll get a little bit closer. But I'm going to put glue on this top part. Because we want that to tuck in here. And I'll not put glue on that yet, just so I don't have to contend with that for now. But basically you're just putting your fingers in here and holding this, these tabs in here. There we go. So I kind of tuck this away, out of the way, kind of up above. And that's all I'm going to do is just hold on to it till it feels like it stays. And you can move it. Now again, if you're using red liner tape, you would just <laughs> stick it and you can move on. But for me, I'm going to let that set up for a second before I move on to the next piece, which would be this one, or this one. I like going this way, I suppose. And actually, that's going to go in like this. And then this is going to tuck in here like this. Pretty cool. I'm going to let that set for a little bit. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to prepare. Like I said, this will hold on pretty quickly, but I don't also want to mess with that too much. So I'm putting that little tab and then putting these two in here. They just tuck right in. So you can watch this. Make sure it's about the same height. So they meet up really nicely there. And then tucking this. And I'll do the same thing all around and when I get back to the end I will be right back. So this last piece I just put the glue but I'm going to go ahead and bend. Actually before I do that bend that little tab in, that tab at the very beginning that had kind of stuck out. And same thing, just hold on to it. And looking at my lineup here, about how high or low. And continue holding it. And once this is set up, I just put a little dab of glue there and just hold on to it like this, on that last little tab from the beginning. Oh my goodness, you guys, check this out just so pretty. Structural awesome. So I start bending this one because <laughs> I always come in and I'm like I'll be right back. So this time uh, I'll go ahead and just this is our last um, part before we start decorating. So this is basically creating a tea jar lid. So of course we have the die cuts because I already did that at the beginning. 
and you're just going to stack them up on top of each other and glue them in that center and then the tabs of course so I'll do that I'll try to give them a nice score but again if you want to bone fold it you know go ahead I just like to give it that give so that if I have to make any adjustments while I'm putting it together it's not like completely rigid because we use the bone folder but that's just the way I do it <laughs> okay so basically these two are just gonna lay on top of each other one on top of the other so I'm going to put some glue I'll hold that and then I'll start doing the tabs so I'm gonna hold this just for a second while it sets up and I'll be right back Okay, and then from here it's just, you know, adhering the tabs, so however you want to start, wherever you want to start. Um, there, maybe this one, and this one. I'll hold these two together. And maybe these two at the same time. So I'm holding this little tip, I'm holding this back piece. And once I can let go of this first piece that I'm holding on to, I'll move on to this one and so on all around. Again, I try to line them up so that they're like the same height. You see what I'm saying? Like where, if I had it open like this, that's not what we want. We want it closed up and I want them to be kind of flush. As flush as I can get it. And I'll just go around the whole thing just like that. Every little tab, this tab, holding onto this, and then I'll do these, and then again the same, it's basically the same you know, little tab, two tabs, little tab, two tabs, until it's all connected, and I'll be right back. I'm at the very last piece here. And, you know, as I'm holding these, I'm kind of looking at the dies for the um, decoration, and there are just so many <laughs> ways to layer them up. I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, now that I bought the metallic, I kind of want to use metallic, too. And I have the blue, that lighter, and the darker blue, and, oh my gosh, there's just so many ways to layer this up. I think what I'm going to do is, like, an outline of the larger, you know, and then, um... And then do overlays with the other colors. We will see. So I'm just holding that, and then again, holding this piece, and I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm still holding on to this bit, but I think we're good to go. Pretty good. Let's bring this guy back. And, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> it looks like a little jewel, and it just, oh. But again, you know, as I'm going around, I'm making sure that I'm keeping these things pretty flush at the top. I don't really care what it's doing. I mean, I do. I want it to be very close, but that's what I was more paying attention to, is that very top edge, just like in here. You know, I wanted that top edge to be nice and flush, and I mean, so pretty. It looks like a little jewel. Love it. Okay, so that was all the instructions, because now it's just, you know, what mix and matching do you want to do, because there is so much. I mean, just with these two, if you were to you know, cut this outer one, or then do an inlay, or, you know, do it all at once. Um, I would probably cut the outer one, then cut this guy out with the inlay, you know what I'm saying? This middle one, and pop it on top. You can layer this on top of something like this one with the plain background, so that, you know, this background shows through what you cut here, and then do all kinds of inlays, or inlay on that one, then another one. Like, there's just unlimited uh, possibilities here. So, I think what I want to do... Oh my goodness. Um, let's do this one. And I'll cut this out. It's only four, because if you see there's four sides. Also, you're going to decorate the top. You can decorate the little corners. You don't have to. You can leave them plain. You can, again, you could have inlaid at the beginning. Uh, so I need to cut out four of those guys. So I'm going to do four of this with a little floral. Um, and I'm going to use this guy. I think I'm going to let that peek out behind. And then I'm going to play with these two colors. So we have that lighter blue. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the lighter blue in the back. So I'm going to cut four of these just plain. And then from that really deep navy blue, I will cut um, this one. Oh. So from this navy blue, I'll cut four just like this with the inlay taped down, of course, and I'll cut out four of them, and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I have my pieces. They're so, so pretty. So what I'm going to do is put glue on the back of my hand because this is very delicate. 
I like to try to put it on the edge as much as I can and then the rest I'll just kind of dip into my my glue hand somebody said <laughs> one of my scarves said that uh, she likes this uh, trick and then a lot of times she'll forget to wash it off and then she'll go and run errands and then freak herself out because she's like what is that <laughs> on her hand for me sometimes I let it dry up and then I just peel it off like I said it gives you a nice exfoliation but uh, there we go so I'm gonna do that with all my pieces just hold it down and I think I'm gonna stick it down flat I mean you can stick it down with some dimensionals that'd be nice too but I think everything I'm going to be doing is pretty much just flat. So I'll do the other pieces just like this. And then I'll put glue on the back of this once it's set up and just stick it down. Okay? Okay, I'll be back. guys. Just kind of left a little weight on them as I was working on the next one. The next one, I'll just take that off for now. And again, if you want to pop these up with a little dimensional, that'd look very lovely. I'm just going to pop this on here. And so I'm just going to glue them down one at a time, of course, because I'm using a wet glue, so I'm going to give it a few seconds before I move on to the next one. And these are pretty much symmetrical. They're the same all around, so... I'll just hold that down. And some people like to decorate before they put it together. However you want to do it, I usually decorate after the box is pretty much assembled. So I'm going to hold that. And then I'll go to the next side, the next side, and I'll be right back. As I went, you know, doing one side and the other, I would just kind of alternate from this side. If I just stuck it down, so that way I push it down while I do the next top or the next side. That way it's kind of helping each other out. And I really like the look of this, like super clean and just pretty with the sides. If you want to add some more, just so it brings out that, like I guess that I wanted to go kind of for like a Chinese porcelain. So the white does also play in that design. Again, we could have cut this whole center out and had the white coming out through there, you know. Uh, maybe not use that blue piece or however it is that you want to do it so pretty so I have my little lid and I'm trying to think how or what I want to do with my lid I think I also want to keep that very simple so I think what I'm going to do is just cut that little top piece so there is tons you know of inlays and again um, I do want to show you that this little triangle maybe that one but this one looks like it's the same size as these guys so if you want to use them as inlays and top pieces you can definitely do that and then put it on there however you want to use them those appear to be the same size yeah so for right now I'm just gonna cut this little guy and I'll just cut it out of a piece of um, the mirror card I have some left here and I'll be right back just kind of tore that away from the rest of the paper I love their embossing on their dies so cute see the little hearts there okay and I'm just going to pop that right in the center there. And I'm just going to glue it down flat. Then you have your little tags and all these other sweet things you can add. So that's the basic construction. I hope you guys um, got some nice tips. I mean, I pretty much follow the instructions. They have always really, really well-written instructions over there at Tonic. Um, I'm going to grab something. I'll be right back. Oh, I didn't mean to mention, um, well, I was pointing out the triangles. Um, this also has this piece here that kind of goes into the tag, but it's also the same shape as this piece. So, again, layering, inlays, however you want to work that. And I might I might add a little something else maybe in those pieces because as I looked at it when I came back from my kitchen, I thought, yeah, I can do a little something. We're going to do a little something in here. Um, but I went to grab tea to see if it actually holds tea. So a jar like this would be that it holds loose leaf tea, right, um, generally. Um, but it's paper and I'm not going to do that but I do have some tea packets and I was like I wonder if they actually fit in there this little tea it's a really nice size um, jar or gift box however you want to use it um, and I only brought four tea packets it looks like it fit probably eight if not maybe ten <laughs> but uh, let's see the sizing on this guy he is like three and a quarter inches by about three and a quarter inches tall so the base is just a little bit smaller, right, because it kind of tucks in. But that's a really nice size box. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, I'll have some images for you guys. I'll have the links in the description box. Thank you so much, Tonic, for sponsoring this video and for sending these items for review. Um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you at the next one. I mean, this is just 
I love things like this. <laughs> Super oh cool. Gosh, you guys. I just my mind is like thinking of all the different things. How cute would it be to decorate this in like different colors for the different seasons or holidays and just every time you know you have that on your little counter and it's different every time. Oh my gosh. Anyway. All right. <laughs> now I'll go. I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.